Hello YouTube, today I want to do a walk around and showcase of my recent purchase, a 1964 Volkswagen Notchback 1500S. Well, let's get to it. This is L87 Pearl White paint. It's definitely had some repaint done in its life. Um, there's even some signs throughout the car, a little bit down there. And some different scratches that show birch green, which was a color for this year. I'm trying to find some scratches to show you what I'm talking about. I don't know how well the light shows, but it looked like maybe at one point the rubber was uh, taped off and possibly painted birch green. But for the most part, I'm fairly positive that this is an original pearl white car. There is a sticker, however, in the front trunk where they had the pink code stickers that does indicate that it was L87 Pearl White. So if we open that up, we see right there the sticker. Knobby old spare tire. Gas tank is underneath this matting in really good shape. Really nothing majorly rust-wise, a little bit of surface, but nothing poking through. If we pull this tire out, we see that the inside of the front trunk is in really nice shape. It does have some waves and some dents, but it does have the correct Mickey Mouse style grills for the horn. The car has been lowered, um, I'm assuming, two notches all around to uh splines rather inner or outer i'm not sure of but car does sit pretty low and you know it has some wear and tear some paint chips some filler crack a little rust underneath the edge of the uh the hood there but it is a very correct car for the year that it is I know that this mustache bar is correct how it comes out like that. It's got the correct wrap arounds. It doesn't have the over riders on it. They're just kind of a, a blade style, but still correct bumpers. It's an S model, so it has the side marker lights interrupting the trim on the front fender. Tires on here are Continentals. In the front, we have 155 60 15. You probably can't read that upside down. What well, looks to be on original Type 3 smoothies with the Type 3 flat nipple caps. So, very exciting. 155s in the front and Continental 165 60 15s in the rear. I actually have 165 60 15 Continentals on the front of my square back. So to have it on the rear of this car and it being so low, it's kind of interesting to see such a small tire. Will I possibly switch it out for a bigger one? Who knows? But for now, it's really not that bad. The hole underneath here is probably not very visible, but it is extremely solid. I will attach a video of the underneath of the car. Here's the underneath of the car while well, it was still loaded on the trailer. And these floor pans are unrealistically immaculate. Very nice shape, very well reserved. Motor underneath is fairly clean. It's got a unique aftermarket exhaust on it. It sounds pretty cool. But for the most part, I'm very impressed at how original and how clean this car is. And if we go on the inside of the car, and I'll also show you the engine and the trunk. It's really not too bad. It's got these funky seat covers that were done at some point, but the floor, with the exception of a little bit of surface rust, is extremely solid. I noticed what looks like some fiberglass mesh that was put over here. So it may have had a little repair at one point, but even still, this is extremely solid. I'll pull this back seat, we can look underneath that. Here's the underneath of the back seat. May have had a small repair where the battery is, but even then I'm not certain. It was converted to 12 volt, so that's been done. 
And another repair that was done on it, I will show you, is the heater channels. So these are the original heater channels. Correct for 64, how they kind of come down in a slant like that. So this heater channel and rocker were replaced. You could see where they blended it in and shot a little bit of primer. But it's the later style square heater channel. And you can see where they sectioned it in right in here. Not too bad of a job, really, considering. But, you know, making do with what they had. And uh, it's solid, so you really can't complain too much there. Someone had did some uh, brown, possibly like a rust preventative paint on the interior. But our dash is still pearl white. It's a late 64 without the push button dash. Or at least to my knowledge, that's what I'm believing. I know that uh, 63 and 64, maybe into 65, they had the push button. Someone who does know a little bit more than me, please tell me. Um, this is an S model. I know that S models came with the marker lights and dual carbs. I don't know if there were any other differences, but someone who knows a little bit more, please tell me on that. We got a red gauge, red, red needle gauge, which is pretty cool. Dash is about what you expect from a car of this age, but it's actually really not bad in comparison. And, uh, we have the correct... Z style armrest. This door does have some cracked filler and the previous owner had went ahead and cut out some rust. So for me, I'm gonna take the time to sandblast that, corrosion protect it, put a new patch on there. And before I take the whole car apart for, for paint and body, I want to drive it and enjoy it. I am finishing up a 66 Fastback, first year Volkswagen Fastback. So this is kind of a drive it and enjoy it as it is car for a while. But I have some L87 paint from the roof and the bumpers of my square back. So what I can do is I can blend it in for the time being and make it a little bit more presentable until I'm ready to strip it down and do a better job on metal work and get rid of all this unnecessary filler and try to thin it down some. But for the most part, the car is very clean. It runs well. For the most part, it goes down the road fairly nice. We'll check out the motor. We'll even get a running shot of it. That's the luggage tray. There's a few holes there. And uh, the pop-out windows were, were replaced with stationary windows due to a little bit of rust like that. But I replaced most of my luggage tray on my 66 Fastback. So this thing is a walk in the park compared to a pan-off restoration that I've been working on for about three years on my Fastback. So. We open up the trunk, it doesn't look too bad. Some sweet German writing on it. And for those who don't know, this car was never sold in America. So all of these cars have been imported. They did have them in Canada, but other than that, these have come from really all different parts of the world. Mainly Europe, I would assume, but I was told by a friend on the west coast that these are french reflectors and that it's a kind of a rare option or a rare accessory or whatever you would want to call it and uh that's cool to know maybe gives a hint that this car is from france you don't really know until you get a birth certificate from wolfsburg germany but for the most part that's pretty cool indication of where this car may have come from we got some more tan paint that was uh, kind of put in here. You know, car's got a few different colors going on it, but realistically, this paint is just helping the preservation of this car. Even the whole interior roof, you know, it doesn't have a headliner or carpet, but someone had took a orbital sander to it and 
It almost looks like brush strokes, but you can't really feel it. But hey, it's coated and it's protected. It's better than no paint or thin paint. So we'll go ahead and open these up. It does have the correct uh, matting that you would pin down a, a cover. But here we got the dual carbs converted to 12 volt. So can't complain. For the most part, it runs fairly decent, and uh, why don't I go ahead and get a running clip for you guys. Carbs tuned and synced. I have not driven, but that's the first year for the 1600 motors, and that motor's all original. So I plan to just pop that back in after restoration. And then I have a 1641 in my 70 square back. It's got an angle cam, either a 100 or a 110. Dual Webers, 34 ICTs, and an empty exhaust on it, and the uh, 87 millimeter pistons to make it a 1641. But Hey, this car goes down the road. Uh, it does have disc brake conversion in the front. I'm yet to pull a wheel on it, but I'm actually going to do that on video with you guys to take a look and see what kind of parts were put on it. It's got a dual master cylinder, dual circuit master cylinder. And uh, let's pull these wheels off and take a look at what the brakes are. So here we have a wide five disc brake conversion had the studs conversion, uh, it's missing one, so that's something I'll have to do before I put this car on the road. Needs a few things, uh, I haven't got the horn or the wipers to work, and I'm going to put some seatbelts in it, but I mean, for the most part, I definitely think that the car was very well described by the previous owner. Got tons of extra parts with it, so he definitely did right by me, and uh, he had took the time to... Do some uh, chassis saver, uh, PUR15 black rust preventative paint and stuff on most of the inside of the fenders and different stuff like that. But, um, you know, very well preserved car. Very uh, fair and honest deal. But, yeah, we got some, uh, some calipers and some disc action going on here. So, that's a nice upgrade from the wide five front drums that would be correct i'll try my best to give you a little driving video of the car shifts really well for the most part for a stock shifter i'm just going nice and slow with it there's no need to go crazy it really goes down the road pretty well for a lowered car and up here I'm gonna turn around in this lot and come back but you know you guys get the point it's really not too bad I was very excited to acquire this car I look forward to getting the chance to do some small stuff to it and preserving this piece of automotive history as well as finishing my 66 fastback to have all three of my type threes together thank you all for sticking around and watching and until next time